Hey, what's up, True Experience Nation? It's your boy, Richie McKaney. If you're new around here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We got a, min a mission around here, and it's very simple, and that is to help you learn how to experience your best life as we are learning to experience our best life. We're about wealth, health, and experiences, man. We have been going over the book, Atomic Habits, so guess what? Guess what? We're going to talk about habits again tonight. How to make good habits um, inevitable and bad habits impossible. Doesn't that sound good? I mean, we all about it. We all about experiencing our best life. We all about improvement. We all about progress. One way to do that is we got to eliminate some of these bad habits that we got that's sucking our time and sucking our happiness or whatever it is that you got going on. We're going to teach you how to break it. You know, sometimes it's, um, it's not always about making a good habit easy. Sometimes it's more about making a bad habit impossible. I don't say impossible. Make it a bad habit hard. I mean, we want to make it difficult. This is the inversion of the third law of behavior change, which is make it easy. We've talked about the cues. We've talked about the cravings. And now we're, we're, we're wrapping up the section of actual habits, the response. And we've talked about making it easy to get into a habit. Now let's talk about making the bad habits hard. We want to create that resistance make it difficult for us to do these things. And one way is called a commitment device. And this is nothing more than a choice that you make in the present time that controls your actions in the future. All right, so here's an example, man. They had a guy who was, uh, you know, some kind of author. He's supposed to be writing a book. And, uh, you know, he liked to, you know, you know, he liked to play around. He liked to, you know, have guests over at the house, like to go out and entertain and party and just have a good old time. He kept procrastinating and putting off writing this book. Publicist calls and says, yo, man, you ain't got the book done yet. You got about three months. You ain't even started. Now, I don't know what publicists do. I'm not an author, so I don't know what happens if they miss the deadline. I don't know if it's like a loan shark. They send a book shark after them to come and get them or take money from them. I have no idea what that entails, but the point was, he needed a deadline at three months to write a whole book. So his commitment device was he had his, his assistant lock up all of his clothes. He took all of his clothes and locked them away. He had no access to them until he finished the book. He had nothing but like a sackcloth or something on. So guess what? No more partying. No more inviting guests over. It just wasn't appropriate. Sat down, focused, got the book finished early. And that book was The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Pretty cool. I didn't know that. That was, a, that was a little tidbit that came in the book, and I kind of like that. Another, that's extreme, okay? Ain't nobody, I'm not about to lock my clothes up. That's a little extreme. I thought this was an interesting um, example. Um, one guy struggled with, you know, being on the internet. You know, it was that night, you're always on the phone, on the internet, watching Netflix and all this kind of stuff. And so he bought an outlet uh, timer, and at 10 o'clock every night where his router was plugged in, the outlet just went dead. And I guess it didn't turn back on until in the morning. Everybody in the house knew it's time for bed. See, that was a bad habit. They made a, they made a decision in the present so that in the future, their actions were like, we're not getting on the internet right now because the internet's out. And so those people who are committed to get rid of bad habits, those are things that they can done. This allows you to, you know, take advantage of, you know, your good intentions when you're feeling good in the moment so that you do not become a victim to your temptations. Okay, it's a prime example of the healthy you goes to the store and does the shopping, but the fat you's rolling around 11 o'clock at night trying to get some Debbie cakes. You might be running around mad in a mug because you ain't got no Debbie cakes, but you're forced, your actions are forced to eat those carrots and all the vegetables up in the crib because that's all you got. That, that's, a, that's an example of a commitment device. And um, I, I, I've never had to use this. I haven't gone through to extremes on this yet, but I can see how it could be effective. So let's talk about how to automate a habit so that you don't even think about it. It just happens. So in here they talk about uh, back in the 1800s, this dude had this general store and theft was a real problem. And they ain't had no cameras. They wouldn't no way to document. I mean, keep track of the receipts really because, you know, folks just they could fudge all that, right? Dude was having a problem. Business was losing money. All the employees were thieving. Well, he come across this invention. It was a new invention at the time, and it was like some kind of security cash register. It was one of the first cash registers to lock automatically 
after each purchase, after each transaction is it locked. Literally overnight, all the theft stopped. Okay, dude didn't have time to hire new employees and trust them and try to change their behaviors. Motherfucker just bought something that kept them locked out. And immediately overnight, no more theft. So that's how you do it without thinking about it. Again, creating the resistance. Make it so difficult to do that people don't even want to do it. By the way, the dude increased in his 1800s, increased his profit margins by $5,000 in five months. That's an equivalent to $100,000 today. It's a big difference um, just by um, making one little simple change like that. So um, that was sorry about, ooh, sorry about that. So that's something like making what they're calling like these, these one, one time um, actions, one time decisions to help make these bad habits very improbable to do. You want to make, um, obviously your good habits, um, easy, but you want to make it harder to get out of a good habit. So once you get, you know, easy to get in, hard to get out. And you can do these one-time purchases or these, these one-time decisions is another tactic. And to me, they're very similar to the, uh, to the other one we talked about, the commitment device. But let's say you replace all your stuff in the, um, all the plates to make small plates. You want to eat less calories, fill your house with smaller plates. So when it's time for dinner, it's time to eat lunch and all that, like you don't have as much space, you naturally tend to eat less. This is like little hacks. And I like that. I think those are, are kind of cool when you can make predetermined changes, these one-time purchases, like you want to get better sleep, motherfucker, buy a better bed. Get blackout curtains. Like make these one simple purchases, like get the TV out of your room. Like you make those one-time deals and then over time you just, it continues to improve and you stay in a bad habit. All right, you want to make it difficult to get out of the bad, the good habit. So like we don't, when you're, when you're healthy, you don't buy all those groceries and the fat you're in there trying to eat some food. It's too much trouble. There's too much resistance to get the bad food. There ain't nothing in the house. It's late at night. What you going to pack up and go to the store and buy something? You way out in the country. See, there's resistance there. And so you just like, man, it ain't worth it. And you stick to the good habit. Make it too hard to get out of the good habit. And we want you to be careful with some pit, of pitfalls. Be careful about tricking yourself thinking, I'm just going to give in this once. I'm just going to take a break. I'm bad about um, just being addicted to the phone. I mean, I work from the phone. I make videos from the phone. I'm constantly posting on social media. It is part of the work that we do from home. Like We make money from our phone. So I'm, I'm going to be on it. I'm not shutting it off. Um, but sometimes I find myself reaching for the phone when I even think I'm bored for a second. I'm just kind of like, I just, I instinctively pick up the phone and, and, and look at it. And, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to take a quick break. It might seem minor, right? It might be something that's just really minor just for a second, but it can lead to some, you know, some real issues later on. If you're t- constantly getting in your, in a situation where you're procrastinating to do work and the things that you need to do to be successful. Those real tangible things that's going to push the needle forward for your life, for your business, for your relationships. Um, when you're constantly sliding into these, these bad habits and you trick yourself into thinking just a, just one minute, just a little bit, just a break. So those are pitfalls. That's one pitfall you need to be careful of. Try to automate. Look, technology is amazing. It can work for you or against you. Let's try to make it work for us. The more you can automate with like machines that make things easier, the more time you can focus on things that can't be automated, that can't be done with technology, that can't be done with machines. Um, You need to write, you need to meditate, you need to make videos, you need to make sales calls, whatever that is. If you have more time to do that because you have more things automated with technology, like let's just talk about a savings plan. Financially, you wanna put back some money, You you wanna have a savings account? Instead of you having to make it difficult to take the money out yourself, move it into a savings, or put it in your little sock drawer, have it do it automatically. You don't even think about it. It's just something that's done. And so um, just a few of those points we want to make. That was pretty simple. I, again, this is some of the things I haven't necessarily done. I have increased resistance between some bad things, but I haven't done like commitment devices or, um, or any of those type of things they haven't been necessary yet. I've, all the other tactics that I've used have been power, powerful enough where I haven't had to utilize that. 
Um, oh, there was a line in the book, and I do want to read. He was like, you know, I was able to remove the mental candy from my mind, which made it easier to eat healthy. I kind of like that. You know, I'm removing the bad stuff out, and then the only thing left is to do the good stuff and, and, and knock it out. So basically, by um, utilizing these commitment devices, these strategic one-time de um, one time devices and, or decisions and technology, you can create an environment that is inevitable to do good habits. So anyway, that's the deal about habits. I hope y'all like that one. Um, there was some neat stuff in here. I think the commitment, to me, I think the commitment device and the, um, the one-time one -time devices are two of the more powerful ones that anybody can really implement. You feel good, you're feeling motivated, you know, take action, commit to putting things in place that make doing a bad habit a lot more difficult and also make it to where when you get in a good habit, it makes it really difficult to get out. And if you combine, if you just combine these things with just some of the other things we talked about, like the two minute rule and all of that, um, you really can be the architect of your life, of your habits um, and things like that. And so um, I hope you are enjoying this book. I'd love some feedback on that. If you are, if you aren't, and even if you're not, it doesn't matter. We're going to finish it anyway because I'm enjoying it and I like it. But I hope you have a wonderful night. Um, you know, Sunday, I'll get out there and do what you got to do. Try to get your worship on, okay? You do some praying. Today's, that's the day that you need to do some praying, some thinking and meditating or whatever. Get it in. But guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. And until tomorrow, I'm out.